Hi everyone, I'm back and the topic for discussion is hemodynamic monitoring and although this is not what you'd expect to see just on a surgical floor or in the emergency room, typically you work in an intensive care or a coronary care department or so, you, the new nurse, do not know when you will be placed in that position. Let's talk a little bit about the heart. We know it's a pump. We know that we have cardiac rhythms. Athletes naturally have slow heart rates and no symptoms. Reason being because they can eject so much blood in, you know, in one stroke of the heart because of their running. Let's look at that infect, infarcted area of the heart which was caused by a blood clot and you can see this obvious death of the heart muscle, a myocardial infarction. And then I'm going to talk about ischemia. Ischemia is caused, it's not complete death, it's lack of blood supply and there's always the potential for recovery of that area. Sinus bradycardia, usually the heart rate is less than 60. Sinus rhythm is usually 60 to 100 and sinus tachycardia usually greater than 100. And of course, American Heart has guidelines in place for how each one is dealt with. Let us talk about cardiomyopathy and invasive monitoring. Here is a patient who was admitted to the hospital saying, Doctor, I feel so short of breath. Why? Because he's having cardiac problems. He has got what is called cardiomyopathy, resulting in extreme shortness of breath. Probably has a very low ejection fraction too. This patient, the doctor has decided to do a workup on him and they're going to put in what is called a pulmonary artery catheter, which was once called the Swan-Gans catheter. And usually it it's quite a complicated situation unless you see it's usually inserted and it's put in the pulmonary artery and there are different waveforms on the monitor to identify exactly what is going on so even though it may seem there's so much up to it it's not even worth talking about unless you witness it and then we have the central venous pressure which is also put into the right atrium and that only measures the pressures in the right atrium and there are pressure bags attached because there's a constant flow of heparinized fluid to prevent backflow of blood. It's quite interesting, but you'd have to work in intensive care to see it all go through. Well, here's a cardiologist who's ordered cardiac medications to be used on this patient. Here are some of the meds patients receive, like this patient is a very good candidate for a heart transplant because of this cardiomyopathy. These patients are really tired, very poor cardiac output. So he's now on Dobutrex to improve his cardiac output. Nitroglycerin, which causes vasodilation and thus improves circulation. And it also decreases the workload of the heart. Then we have amiodaron, which is an anti and rhythmic, used for both atrial and ventricular rhythms, very popular in the in a cardiac setting. And then there's morphine sulfate, IV, for chest pain, and this also helps to decrease anxiety. Um, typically what happens with these drips when patients are put on them, the doctor decides, it's called titration, he decides how you go up and down on the drips depending on what your cardiac parameters are. Things like cardiac outputs are done and uh, the central venous pressure, the, the wedge is also done, PCWP, pulmonary capillary wedge pressure. So there's a lot more to it. I, this is just an overview and I hope you've learned something from it, hemodynamic monitoring. Have a great day.